Over the past 24 hours, we've gotten a huge reaction to last night's angle about the horrific murder of 60-year-old Burnell Trammell in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He was gunned down in broad daylight one week ago tonight. Mr. Trammell had been a fixture in his River West neighborhood and a supporter of both BLM and lately for the re-election of Donald J. Trump. The sight of a Rastafarian poet holding a re-elect Trump sign was unusual, to say the least, and some believe his killing was politically motivated. While police are still investigating, they saw the man shown in this photo, and they say he's the prime murder suspect. As of this evening, neither BLM nor a single Democrat elected official in the state of Wisconsin has commented on Mr. Trammell's death. Not a peep from Milwaukee Mayor Tom Barrett. Nothing from Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers. Nothing from Attorney General Josh Call. Not any of the Democrat congressmen, none, have expressed their condolences or outrage about the possible political slaying of a peaceful, law-abiding African-American man. This ear-splitting silence follows a disturbing pattern of Democrat disinterest in the larger African-American community as well. Now, since the coronavirus lockdowns and racial justice protests began, killings of black men, women, and even children have skyrocketed, but not at the hands of bad cops. Overwhelmingly, these murders have been committed by other African-American men. Now, of course, Al Sharpton and BLM activists don't show up to march against this carnage. No calls for the removal of mayors and governors who refuse to tackle violent crime and do so head on. No celebrities doing Instagram Live concerts in memory of the victims. Why is that? Because there's no political benefit in it, that's why. Now, a similar scenario is playing out in the debate over reopening schools this fall. Teachers unions joined at the hip with Democrats have refused to return to their jobs. Today, Washington, D.C. public schools joined a slew of other school districts in announcing there would be zero in-person learning for kids. It's all going to be online. Now, pretty much every pediatric specialist I've seen believes this 100% distance learning approach is a total disaster. It's terrible for all children and all parents, but especially for at-risk kids from single-parent families. We know that children from low-income families in particular who are being homeschooled, they're not getting an adequate education because their parents are working. Particularly that younger age group, K through eight, distance learning just does not work. Many low-income families, their children do not have access to the internet. They don't uh, have support for doing uh, remote learning. But how could Democrats endorse keeping kids at home full time when the virus poses a minuscule threat to young Americans? After all, daycare centers for essential workers never shut down, and grocery store employees, they show up every day to work, as do bus drivers and nurses. So why do educators get a special stay-at-home pass, especially while they claim to care so much about the welfare of the children? Isn't it? and his administration are messing with the health of our children. Moms and dads are worried, I'm worried as a grandparent, about whether or not my grandkids are going to be able to go back to school safely. You know, and these, as I've said before, these aren't somebody else's kids, they're all our kids. Now, of course, shutting everything down is a Democrat's only real answer to the coronavirus. From California to Michigan, you see a pre-election momentum beginning to build to either pause or reverse reopenings. Today, Maryland's liberal Republican Governor Larry Hogan cited cases in other states to justify halting his own state's reopening. We will remain paused at this point and not move into stage three openings until it is safe, prudent, and thoroughly backed by the data. Looking at these other states, they've been doing pretty well and then shot up, and we don't want to be one of them. It's unbelievable. Montgomery County, Maryland's numbers are actually really encouraging. Of course, these decisions are driven not by what's good for the general welfare, but by politics. Lockdowns plus trillions in welfare spending until apparently there's zero virus in America. That's realistic. 
Now, remember the initial justification for stay-at-home orders was the need to preserve the hospital system. You could kind of understand that. But now they're using these lockdowns or pauses to preserve Biden's chances of beating Trump. It's truly disgusting. And whom do these lockdowns and school closures end up hurting the most? Well, rich families, they hire tutors and they take up new hobbies at home. It's the poor families who will struggle as they try to hold down jobs and oversee kids' Zoom classes and all the homework. The divide between the haves and the have-nots will only widen. But one gets the sense that the virus fear-mongering is beginning to wear thin and that more families see the need to move on to preserve what we have while still protecting the most vulnerable. Even the New York Times seems to think that the unions have maybe overstepped and risk alienating millions of voters, reporting that te teachers in many districts are fighting for longer school closures, stronger safety requirements, and limits on what they're required to do in virtual classrooms while flooding social media and state capitals with their concerns and threatening to walk off their jobs if their key demands are not met. Demands? Now, they can sit at home in their t-shirt and shorts, get the same pay, and they're issuing demands? The Miami Teachers Union is pushing to limit online learning. Limit online learning, <laughs> yeah. Why? Well, according to the Times, they've cited anxiety about how they and their homes would look on camera during live teaching. So they're not going to go to the classroom and they don't want to teach online. That's perfect. With their local union leader saying that if a teacher does not feel comfortable and the teacher is not secure in the modality, they're not going to flourish and give the best of themselves. Modality? What about the comfort of students? Will they be able to flourish cooped up in their homes sharing a a computer screen with a brother or sister if they even have one? And do this for months on end? The left doesn't care. If it was really about safety, why are teachers unions fighting reopening plans even in states where the virus is under control? In Hawaii, for example, which has one of the lowest COVID rates in the country, teachers are resisting fully reopening, including on the small island of Lanai, which had zero zero confirmed cases. Now, thankfully, President Trump wants the kids back in school, and he has a solution for unions and school districts that do not put kids first. Say if a school doesn't want to open or if a governor doesn't want to open, maybe for political reason and maybe not. But there is some of that going on. The money should go to the parents so they can send their children to the school of their choice. Bingo, school choice. Go to a school that's actually teaching. The NEA and the AFT are powerful forces. But if they only remain so, I think they only will remain so, if Americans continue to believe that public education is still worthwhile. By refusing to teach, by politicizing curricula, by jeopardizing our children's mental and physical well being, they're showing us how non essential they're becoming. And that's the angle.